Hello all and welcome once again to my YouTube channel Engineering Physics by Sanju. This is a fourth MCQ session on quantum physics and in this session we will discuss some questions on Schrodinger's equation. If you like the session then please subscribe the channel and share with your friends. Let's start question number one. The equation of motion of matter waves was derived by the options are Heisenberg, de Broglie, Schrodinger and Bohr. So who derived the equation of motion of matter waves? In 1926, Schrodinger developed a rigorous theory using de Broglie idea of matter waves. In this theory, Schrodinger incorporated the expression for de Broglie wavelength into general classical equation and derived the equation of motion of matter waves associated with moving particle. This equation is called as Schrodinger's equation. So answer to this question is Schrodinger. The equation of motion of matter waves was derived by Schrodinger. Let us move on to the next question, question number 2. The steady state form of Schrodinger's wave equation is and the options are linear, quadratic, differential equation, derivable. So which is the correct option here? The steady state Schrodinger's wave equation is a linear in the wave function psi. It means that no term has psi with a degree greater than 1. It also means that if two wave functions psi1 and psi2 are solutions, then any linear combination of psi1 and psi2 is also a solution. So the steady state form of Schrodinger's wave equation is linear. Question number 3, one dimensional time dependent Schrodinger wave equation is written as and these are the options given. So which is the correct option? One dimensional time dependent Schrodinger's wave equation is written as minus h bar square by 2m del 2 psi by del x square plus v psi equal to i h bar del psi by del t. So here B is the correct option here. One dimensional time dependent Schrodinger's wave equation is written as minus h bar square by 2m del 2 psi by del x square plus v psi equal to i h bar del psi by del t. Question number 4. The values of energy for which Schrodinger's steady state equation can be solved are called as and the options are eigenvectors, eigenvalues, eigenfunctions, operators. Eigenvalues are the values of energy for which Schrodinger's steady state equation can be solved. The corresponding wave function is called as eigenfunction. So the values of energy for which Schrodinger's steady state equation can be solved are called as eigenvalues. So here B is the correct option. Let us move on to question number 5. If psi1 and psi2 are two solutions of Schrodinger wave equation, then which of the following is also a solution? The options are psi1 by psi2, psi1 into psi2, psi2 by psi1 or psi1 plus psi2. So which of these four options is the correct option? In the earlier slides, we have seen that Schrodinger's equation is linear in psi. That is the addition of two solutions of the equation is also a solution of the same equation. It means the wave function must obey the principle of linear superposition. So here if psi1 and psi2 are two solutions of Schrodinger wave equation, then psi1 plus psi2 
is also a solution of Schrodinger's wave equation. So, D is the correct option here. Question number 6. For a quantum wave particle, energy E is equal to and the options are h bar k, h bar omega, h bar omega by 2, h bar k by 2. So, which one is the correct option here? We know E is equal to h nu, where h is Planck's constant and nu is frequency of radiation. Let us multiply and divide by 2 pi. So, we get h upon 2 pi into 2 pi nu. h upon 2 pi can be written as h bar and 2 pi nu can be written as omega, the angular frequency. And therefore, we can write E is equal to h bar omega. So, here B is the correct option. For a quantum wave particle, energy E is equal to h bar omega. Question number 7. For a quantum wave particle, momentum P is equal to and the options are h bar k, h bar omega, h bar omega by 2, h bar k by 2. So, this is a similar question like earlier one. To solve this, we can write de Broglie hypothesis, lambda is equal to h upon p and therefore p is equal to h upon lambda. Here also let us multiply and divide by 2 pi. So, we get h upon 2 pi into 2 pi by lambda. h upon 2 pi is h bar and 2 pi by lambda is k, the propagation constant. And therefore, we can write p, momentum p is equal to h bar k. So, here a is the correct option. For a quantum wave particle, momentum P is equal to h bar k. Question number 8. A momentum operator in one dimension is, the options are minus i h bar del by del x, i h bar del by del x, i h bar del by del t, h bar del by del x. So, which one of this is the correct option? To get an answer to this question, let us consider a wave function psi equal to psi naught e raised to i k x minus omega t. And let us try to calculate minus h bar square by 2 m del 2 psi by del x square. So, this psi can be replaced by psi naught e raised to i k x minus omega t. And when we differentiate this with respect to x two times, we will get it as minus h bar square by 2 m, this is a constant i k square psi naught e raised to i k x minus omega t minus h bar square into i k square this will give us h bar square k square and divided by 2 m psi naught e raised to i k x minus omega t is nothing but psi. So, when we try to calculate minus h bar square by 2 m del 2 psi by del x square we get h bar square k square by 2 m psi h bar k is p momentum and therefore h bar square k square is p square so we can write p to be equal to square root of this my h bar square by 2 m del 2 by del x square and that is nothing but minus i h bar del by del x so we can write momentum as a differential operator where p can be written as differential operator minus a i h bar del by del x. So, here a is the correct option. Question number 9 is a similar question for the energy operator. An energy operator in one dimension is and the options given are minus i h bar del by del x, i h bar del by del x, i h bar del by del t and h bar del by del x. So, which one is, which one of this is the energy operator? Let us again consider a wave function psi equal to psi naught e raised to i k x minus omega t and now let us calculate i h bar del psi by del t. So, let us write this psi as psi naught e raised to i k x minus omega t 
and let us differentiate it with respect to t. So, we will get minus i omega psi naught e raise to i kx minus omega t. i h bar will be as it is, it is a constant. i into minus i will become 1 and therefore, we will get it as h bar omega and psi naught e raise to i kx minus omega t is psi. So, i h bar del psi by del t can be written as h bar omega psi and h bar omega is nothing but E, the energy operator. So, we can write E to be equal to I h bar del by del t. So, here C is the correct option and energy operator in one dimension is I h bar del by del t. Question number 10, P hat is called as, the options are an eigenvalue, a momentum operator, an energy operator or a wave function. In quantum mechanics, an operator associated with linear momentum is called as momentum operator and is written as p hat which is equal to minus i h bar del by del x. This hat indicates an operator. So, in quantum mechanics, position, momentum and energy can be written as operator, can be expressed as operator. So, p hat is called as a momentum operator. Question number 11, e hat is called as and the options are an eigenvalue, a momentum operator, an energy operator, a wave function. E hat is called as an energy operator and it is given by E hat equal to I h bar del by del t. Again here hat indicates an operator. So, here C is the correct option. E hat is called as an energy operator. Question number 12. Which function is considered independent of time to achieve the steady state form? The options are wave function psi, del psi by del t, del 2 psi by del t square and potential energy V. The answer to this question is V, the potential energy. To achieve steady state form of Schrodinger's equation, the potential energy of the particle is considered to be independent of time explicitly and hence the potential energy V vary with position only. So, here the correct answer is D potential energy. Let us move on to the next one question number 13. According to quantum mechanics a free particle can possess the options are discrete energies continuous energies, single value of energy and zero energy. Which one is the correct option? If we consider a particle in a potential well, it will have boundary with boundary conditions with either finite or zero potential. Such particle will have quantized energies and therefore discrete energies. But a free particle moves in a space without any restriction in zero potential. So, such free particle will have continuous energy. So, according to quantum mechanics, a free particle can possess continuous energies. Question number 14. The quantized energy of the particle of mass m confined in one dimensional box of length l is Options are n square h upon 8 ml square, n h square upon 8 ml square, n square h square upon 8 m square l square and n square h square upon 8 ml square. The quantized energy of the particle of mass m confined in one dimensional box of length l is given by E n is equal to n square h square upon 8 ml square where n is an integer, h is Planck's constant, m is mass of the particle 
and L is length of the box. So he, here D is the correct option. N square H square upon 8 ml square. Question number 15. The lowest energy state of the particle of mass m confined to a linear box of width L is? These are the options given. So which one is the correct option? In the last question, we have seen the quantized energy of the particle of mass m confined in one dimensional box of length L is given by E n is equal to n square h square upon 8 ml square. Now for the lowest energy state of the particle, we can write n is equal to 1 and therefore lowest energy state of the particle can be written as h square upon 8 ml square. So we have just put n is equal to 1 here. So here a is the correct option. So that was the last question. I hope the session was helpful to you. If you like the session, then please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to share it with your friends. Thank you. Thank you once again.